Morning, everybody, and welcome in. Mornings with Monkey Toe, episode four. A uh, few people already in. Good to see. Nice, bright, and early soon after 11 o'clock on this Tuesday. All right, give, me, give you a bit of context. Uh, this is actually the last of our series today, Mornings with Monkey Toe. We've run a four-part series over as many weeks, speaking with different industry professionals and key players in the Monkey Toe and X-Beam stories. Uh, I've been Louis Herman Watts, still am, throughout the whole series and uh, discuss, uh, directing the discussion between um, a lot of a lot of good industry people as we've learned about the X-Beam and also the Monkey Toe experience. This week, we're going out of the Monkey Toe tent again. We're going out with a bang in this series. We're out across the ditch to Queensland, where we're going to catch up with Edward Bowden, the contract manager at BuildCorp. He's based out of Brisbane. He's got an awesome project, the Valley Metro project, to discuss this morning. So good to have you on the line, Edward, because after the Queensland Reds got absolutely humiliated on Friday night, I worried you might not take the call from New Zealand. I was hesitant, mate. I was hesitant, but uh, yeah, I'm here, reluctantly. You're you're one of the rarest uh, characters to find in Australia, an Australian rugby union fan. There's not many of them. <laughs> We're doing one. We're uh, dropping off, but uh, I'll stay true, mate. <laughs> we, we will we will rise again at some point. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good to hear. Yeah, that's that's the right attitude. Well, thanks for joining us today to round out the series. And I've had a really good, uh, really enjoyable time kind of learning about the construction sector and also, I guess, spreading the information about what the X Beam has meant for it. So just let's start with you before we get into the project we're going to discuss today. What's a bit of background on your professional career to date? Yeah, mate. Uh, look, yeah, currently I work for uh, Bill Corp here in their uh, Brisbane office. We've got three offices uh, around the country, uh, Melbourne and um, Sydney. And um, yeah, mate, uh, just a contracts manager with Bill Corp at the moment. But, um, you know, sort of career, career progression was uh, started out with Tompkins Commercial and Industrial Builders um, and did my uh, cadetship there onto a uh, contracts administrator where I uh, then jumped ship to Hutchinson Builders. Um, in Brisbane and uh, did a couple of years with them on a couple of interesting projects um, and then yeah now I've uh, yeah uh, turned to Bill Corp and uh, that's where I find myself in my current um, current uh, role uh, so loving it here and um, yeah so I'm, I'm stunned to uh, undertake uh, quite a quite a few um, interesting projects uh, so it's, it's, it's really good. Yeah, and we've got a we've got a real interesting project. Uh, when I caught up with you the other day, this there's there's lots to debrief and there's lots of nuance to this one. So I think people are going to really enjoy hearing about the monkey toe input. Uh, let's let's talk about that then. Your first encounter or where you heard about monkey toe and where the X Bing kind of came along. Yeah, look, um, monkey toe uh, with this uh, particular project, um, monkey toe really came along. Uh, they they tended the project early on. Um, uh, we had roughly about 500 square metres of plant um, deck space uh, to, to install on our uh, Valley Metro project. And um, Bungie Toe were there to begin with, uh, tender in it, um, provided a cost estimate, and um, really was for me to take on the project, uh, look at the designs, and um, choose the right application. Um, obviously, Monkey Toe uh, weren't the only um, tenderers on the project. You had um, about another four or five uh, steel um, fabricators um, also looking at the project. So, yeah, that's when I first uh, came across uh, Monkey Toe in my tender list. Um, yeah. So, so you already mentioned a few of the alternatives to uh, the, the Monkey Toe um, tender. Uh, mm. Who else? So, the, so steel was obviously there, but what, there was. A, I assume there was specifics about this job that kind of made you point towards the XBM or point towards Monkey Toe in the first instance. Yeah. Look. Um, the monkey toe, the monkey toe system was um, favourable because of the the weight uh, or, or the lack of um, with their system um, when you compare it to steel. Um, now, there's plenty of steel around; uh, you see it everywhere; it's still standing. Um, but the monkey toe system, yeah, because of the weight and the limitations we had with the Valley Metro project and the and the existing structure that we had to work in with. Um, it was favourable, but uh, we didn't really know too much about the system. Um, in our line of business, um, builders are less likely to take too many risks, stick to what they know. Um, unfortunately for Bill, uh, Monkey Toe, uh, steel is what we know. Um, so these new systems like the X-Beam system, like these aluminium um, composite fibre arm systems, uh, 
information is really um, the key to, to, to adopting um, this new system. So I found that when we came to make a decision, um, to be honest, I was actually on the side of the steelwork um, and, and not the monkey toe system, but it, you know, the monkey toe boys actually got in touch with our engineer for the project and um, managed to sort of inform our engineer um, and alleviate any fears he had about uh, attaining a 2.5 KPA rating. We had some heavy uh, mechanical plan up there and um, really just showing that it was actually um, a, an acceptable um, engineered solution. Yeah, outstanding. And, and one thing you you mentioned earlier was weight, and we're going to talk about weight um, a little bit later on. So I'm catching up here with Edward Bowden of, of BuildCorp talking about the Valley Metro project, which is a very curious one. So if not Monkey Toe, you said there were um, other alternatives. Steel is what you have known. Why wasn't steel going to work necessarily as well as the Monkey Toe system on this particular project? Well, so Valley Metro, in, in a short summary, is a refurbishment of a, a shopping centre over a train station. So there, there are a number of limitations that we were facing. Um, the existing structure was built in the seventies. Um, not much information was known about the structure. We did have column cracking, um, concrete cancer um, in, in areas. So we were worried about the structure. The roof frame in itself, uh, the steelwork really couldn't hold much weight at all, at all. We could not rely on the roof structure itself. So we had to rely on the columns, which like I said, had, had issues. So we were worried about the weight. Now we had to bear our load um, through columns. If we had used steel, um, there would be column work to do, um, column um, you know, rem remedial works to do, which was an unknown um, in itself. So using the monkey toe system, uh, we, we knew the weights of, of what we had to put down on the deck. Um, the monkey toe system itself was actually very, very light compared to steel work. And um, we found that it were, we, we wouldn't require any remedial works to the concrete uh, columns if we were going to use the um, monkey toe system, which is purely based because it was a lighter framed system. That was, um, that was a good outcome. Um, the connection detail to the top columns was a much um, simpler uh, connection detail because it was lighter. And um, there were instances where we couldn't bear directly down on these columns. Um, with the monkey toe system just because of um, pressed up against neighbors um, premises and we couldn't really um, yeah, um, oversell. So it was much easier to deal with those design issues along the way when we found further limitations um, on site because we're only talking about a light framed plant deck, not a, a larger framed plant, um, steel uh, heavy plant deck. So the issues we come across were much easier also to solve um, because of the monkey toe system. Yeah, yeah. And that's a really interesting point that we'll, we'll circle back to about problem mm. solving and, and how you kind of come across solutions and, and what, uh, well, I guess, what composite watch product is easier to, when you kind of do come into a bit of adversity on site. Uh, you mm. mentioned that monkey toe got in touch with your engineer just to alleviate any concerns. And we've heard it time and time again, traditional mindsets. And also you guys are working in pretty high stakes environments. You're talking about being above a train station um, in a shopping center. You don't want any liability on your hands. You, you will take the safe option. Do you know what Monkey Toe in particular were alleviating? Like what concern it was a, about the, the system that made you made the engineer then obviously your crew as well go, okay, no, we yeah. can actually use this? Yeah, absolutely. Look, a, a big consideration as well um, was craneage. So the nearest point, um, loading point for craneage uh, was about 70, 75 metres away. So it was a large 320 uh, tonne crane that we had to use. Um, we only had to do one day of craneage, and that was for the main the main beams of the plant deck with the monkey toe system. Um, the rest of the um, elements, Australia, the um, aluminium elements, could be warped up. Um, so, lifting over a live environment um, in the city um, is always difficult, and minimising that risk to one day instead of with the steel system. You know, you'd probably be using five days worth of um, steel work. Um, was a big consideration and also a time and cost consideration. So it, it sort of ticked all the boxes in that respect as well in terms of, um, yeah, in, installation. 
We're catching up here with Edward, ba- Edward Bowden. He's a, a contract manager for Build Corp. If you've got any questions and you're in the lobby right now, drop them in there. We'll see if we can clear them if they are relative at the end. Um, we talk about the human side of this. And, and, and again, you've come back to waste again, which is outstanding, just that, uh, I guess, clear difference in cranage. What about apprehension? Um, because I, I feel like they're, they're you know, as again, again, I'll say high stakes, we use those words. So was there apprehension going to something you didn't know? Or was there a moment when you saw it in, in the flesh and you saw it working that you went, oh, gee whiz, like this is a good miss here that we've, we've gone this way? Yeah, certainly. Yes, there was definitely apprehension. Um, like, like I said, I, you know, you generally stick to what you know, still, still all around, still standing. Um, that's a tried and tested system. Um, but when you're faced with certain limitations, you, you, you know, we're paid to do our job and we're, we're paid to investigate the best possible um, application for our projects. Um, that's what sort of happened here. Uh, at the moment, at, at, at the first instance, it was the engineer um, who obviously drew steel. He drew, he drew steel. That's why I thought Monkey Toe was there um, with their system. It just needed to to be reviewed and understood um, on, by both parties. I mean, regardless, uh, you, you know, the engineer may have been um, over the line with uh, the monkey toe system, but it still takes the builder to become over the line as well, because the builder's the one who's going to be there repairing um, and maintaining for the next, you know, um, so, so long for their warranty period. So um, it, take, it took both parties, but really, you know, when we, we only scratched the surface to start with. Uh, Monkey Tape came back, and then we really started to look at it, and we really saw benefits across the board. Um, so, we're sort of—I'm sort of thankful to the Monkey Tape team that uh, they um, they persisted with us um, in, in in trying to get uh, on the project on the project. Awesome stuff. What are your what are your experiences with price points then between structural steel and um, what Monkey Tape offers with the XPM? Um, it's funny. Look, you know. When you're talking about the actual plant deck itself, just just the, the materials, the fabrication, generally speaking, yes, steel is is, is just slightly uh, cheaper, but it's it's everything around that. It's the craneage that you save on, it's the time that you save on, it's the risk, which you you know can't put a cost against risk, but it, it's certainly um, uh, consideration. Um, the risk is mitigated as well. So it's everything around um, the, um, the whole package itself when you look at it in, in, in a greater um, scope that uh, in this instance, the Mapito system was a cheaper alternative for us, which is a consideration. Outstanding. As someone that's on, on and off sites and you've kind of seen a bit and you, you gave us your, your background initially, can you see this composite or this technology creeping into other areas of construction? Is there anything that would leap to mind? Yeah, look, I, I can. What, what surprised me about the monkey toe system was that they could make such large um, load-bearing beams out of a composite aluminium. I, I didn't realise that that could be done, that that, that size, that that load um, could be attained um, and achieved. So I, I, can, I can see other applications. Obviously, stairs is a great example. I, I could see load-bearing beams uh, with portal frame sheds, um that still seems to be structural steel so yeah it, there are uh, a number of applications i could see that um creeping in um with, with, with the you know, composite um, system so yeah absolutely I, I think just what is the biggest barrier for uh, monkey toe and, and, and the system is um understanding is knowledge about the system and what it is what it's capable of i mean generally when you see aluminium you see thin beams, thin members, and deflection is higher, uh, roughly, and I'm generalizing here, rather than steel. Um, it's sort of a sort of an accepted uh, look, but with the monkey toe system and the strength of the composite, um, I, don't, I don't see any deflection in my plant decks um, that we've installed. And yeah, I, I believe it's just as good as, and, and if not a better um, alternative to steel. Well, look, that, that's a great segue because that ties into a question we've just got here in the lobby. Was Ed happy with his finished product? And I'm reading between the lines. It sounds like you are. But let you answer that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm, I'm happy with the uh, the product we've installed. It, um, you know, it, it, it looks good. There's less welds. It's, um, it's just a cleaner looking product. Um, 
And uh, yeah, look, you know, my client was, um, was 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 very happy with the with the end result with the with the product. Um, so yeah, no, no, it's terrific. Yeah, it's a neat place to end it, mate. I really do appreciate your time. Um, yeah, I hope I hope for you talking about something so happy has alleviated those memories of Friday night in the Red Highlands game. <laughs> so it's been awesome to have you here uh, to round off the series. You know, I really do appreciate that. Um, just in general, this morning with Monkey Mornings with Monkey Toe series has been brilliant. Catching up with people like Edward who have real life hands on experience with the X Beam system with Monkey Toe. I think it's been a really great insight. So if you've just caught one of them, I would encourage you to go catch up with uh, Craig, Rowan, and Logan's episodes, just because you get a good read across the construction industry about different um, applications and, and different pointed points of view on a i guess a new product but it is changing the the kind of mentality around the sort of stuff so thank you for your time this morning you would really do appreciate it and thanks for everybody who's tuned in throughout it's been a lot of fun hope everyone has a good week and um we'll catch up again i'm sure all right see you later no